Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Garland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 328, season 14. Today's date is April 27, 2024, and welcome to the show. On today's program, I will talk about the Chicago rock band from the 1960s, The Crying Shames. Also, I will talk about a food product from the 1970s. Uh, excuse me. Uh, a lot of people remembered it. Other people's never heard of it, and it was called, it was the Kugel peanut butter spread, not the Kugel that Jewish meal. It's not that. It's something else, because I think that's spelled with a U, and this is with two O's. So I'll talk about uh, my memories of that product. Okay, uh, first uh, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by ClearSill. Remember that. <laughs> And uh, I used this product when I was a teenager. Oh, yeah. I remember very well. So here's a commercial from 1978. And uh, the woman that's talking, uh, she's very familiar to TV uh, viewers. I'll tell you who it, who it is after the commercial is played. So sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the show, folks. Thank you. The last thing I want to be seen with is this, a face full of pimples. That's why I need a powerful lotion, Clearasil Benzoyl Peroxide Lotion, the tough stuff. Strong, Clearasil's got benzoyl peroxide, and that's strong medicine. And look, it's a lotion that works deep down, invisibly, so only you know it's there. That's today's strong way to help heal pimples fast. So if you don't want a face full of these, use this, Clearasil Benzoyl Peroxide Lotion, the tough stuff. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Clear Cell. Uh, the woman that's speaking in the commercial, it's none other than Audrey Landers. She's an actress. Uh, she's best known as Afton Cooper from the TV series Dallas. She was on there for many years. She did a lot of commercials before that. She has a famous sister, too. Her name is Judy. Uh, she's famous for her role in Madam's Place and Vegas. You know, so you have the sisters. I don't know if they're still acting. Uh, I think Audrey still is. I haven't seen the other one. So um, they were over there. I mean, they were on TV from the late 70s and 80s. So, yeah, very pretty ladies. As for Clear Cell, um, this product was introduced in 1950. Uh, so it's an acne medicine. It uh, contains uh, what, what was mentioned in the commercial benzoyl peroxide and other stuff. And uh, I used it when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't have a bad complexion, maybe a little bit, you know. The rumor is if you ate, drank a lot of Coke or uh, had like hamburgers, you know, uh, chocolate or stuff like that, that would trigger the acne. Uh, but there were other kids uh, when I went to school at Bogan, at Bogan high school they, they were they they had it worse they really did and they had like scars and you know and pimples blackheads whiteheads oh it was awful sometimes it worked you know but sometimes it didn't work for most people but i do remember the commercials uh they used to advertise it like in the mid 70s until the 80s and uh wolfman jack was a spokes spokesperson and uh, that was in 1975. He signed a contract, and he did that for a min for a few years. He advertised it on the radio. He did he on television. I remember that when I watched uh, TV in the afternoon, like on Channel Nine or Channel Thirty Two. And uh, the other acne medicine that was uh, competing was Stridex, and that was the pads. I did use that. It did help. It did help, but uh, he showed the Stridex commercials, you know, like with the pads with all that dirt and gunk, and it's disgusting. Blech. So, um, there's st the products are still around, so you don't hear much about teenagers using that stuff. I, I don't know, I don't know if they advertise it, no, not really, but it is there, both of them. So, acne is, uh, you know, it's a serious con skin condition. It really is, you know, so. 
Yeah, it's not it's nothing to laugh about, you know. But when you're a teenager, they uh, they make fun of you, and uh, so some you break out, you know, you break out in that. But eventually, when you grow up, it goes away, you know. But some people have it in their adult life, you know, like that. So that's very interesting. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned uh, I will talk about the Chicago rock band from the 1960s, The Crying Shames, and also the Cuckoo Peanut Butter Spread from the 1970s. Before I get started, I'll mention something. Uh, not about my health. Um, so far, I'm doing okay. I'm still tired, but I'm doing okay. Uh, one thing was changed. Uh, I got for, uh, Monday, I'll be going to my regular doctor for a checkup. We'll see what he says. Also, I was supposed to be, I was scheduled to go for an operation May, I forget the date, 9th or something like that. But they moved, they called, they changed it to May 6th, day after my Easter. How fun. It's like that. <laughs> so, well, maybe I want to get it over with. So they're going to remove a bladder stone and then uh, stretch the scar tissue around my groin area for the third time. It happens to most prostate cancer uh, patients. But the doctor said when he examined me, you know, my urologist, he examined me, this one's not bad, but it needs to be stretched. So, but he has to remove the bladder stone anyway. So uh, I said, all right. So it's outpatient. I'll be there for just a day and come home, rest. I hope I don't wear the catheter, but I have a feeling I will. I hope not. Fingers crossed. Oh, I hope not. Anyway, um, so yes, tomorrow is uh, Palm Sunday. Starts Holy Week for me and anyone who celebrates it. Looking forward to it. Okay. Now let's talk about the uh, Crying Shames. Now this is a rock group. Uh, it was formed in 1966 and uh, it was a garage rock band. Excuse me. Uh, they were from Hinsdale, Illinois. Right in, you know, in our backyard. <laughs> uh, first, they were named known as the Travelers, and it was formed by a man. His name was Tom Doody, Doody, excuse me, and his nickname was Toad. The rest of the members were Jerry Stone, Stonehenge, Dave Purple, Grape. Uh, he was from a group called the Prowlers. I don't know where that's, I don't know about that group. Uh, Denny Conroy from Possum River and Jim Fairs from the Roost from the Roosters and also Jim Plister, J.C. Hook. And the reason he was called that because he was born with a left hand, without a left hand and wore a hook, which is, oh, that's sad. It really was. Um, anyway, they formed the band. Uh, so, um, you know, they started recording and then... Uh, They, uh, their first hit was uh, called Sugar and Spice. You must have heard this song so many times on the radio, but it was originally uh, sung by the Searchers in England in 1963. 1963. Uh, I heard that. I, I like this one better, <laughs> in my opinion. And when they played it on Chicago radio, on the radio stations, like for example, WLS, it just took off. And uh, so it was a huge, huge hit. And uh, so uh, that's great. And it made uh, the rec and with on their record. And the, the other uh, singles they had were We Could Be Happy, uh, we'll meet again. Hey, Joe. Uh, they also say it could be we're in love. That's another uh, great song that you also hear on the radio. I love that song, too. It is great. It's wonderful. Those guys were really, they were they were awesome like that. Uh, of course, they toured. Uh, I I think they toured in high schools. Probably I don't know. I was I was a, very young, so I, um, I don't know. So anyway, the uh, 
but the 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 song it could be we're in love was not also number one and they played it on wls also at wc at cfl you know remember that station and uh they keep changing some members left some members came you know how that is you know and uh, the group disband, uh, disbanded they broke up december 1969 and then they were later on they uh reunited to continue the tour uh, i don't know if they reunited in uh, other parts of the country probably but most in uh uh how are you in the chicagoland area and uh so uh that's that's great that's very nice like that and uh tom duty is still alive you know i don't uh, i think he was touring at, uh, still touring and so is jim plister i think he's alive too the rest have passed away i believe yeah but there's a great interview on youtube uh, someone sent me a link to that i listened and i watched it yesterday and it was fascinating he explained about uh, the beginnings of the group and i uh, seemed like a nice man you know, and did that. Uh, it's fascinating. So if you if you do a a search on YouTube, you know, type in Tom Duty from the Crying Shames, watch it. You know, so that's great. So they still play this song on the radio on on all these stations. They still do. I mean, they play this band. They played mostly those two hits, uh, Me Me FM. You know, the radio station. They still play those songs. Uh, probably sometimes even uh, their less known songs. They do that. So it's fascinating. It really is. So uh, I, when I was growing up and listening to WLS or uh, Magic 104 in the 80s, I used to listen to Crying Shames, you know. I don't know they were, you know, like when Dick Biondi <laughs> did, was the DJ. It was, uh, it was he sounded excited because in the 60s he uh he was on um you know on the radio stations and he played the the crying shames all the time i don't know if he went to events you know when the crying shames were performing at you know certain uh venues that he was there i probably was i i don't know so that's that's really nice it really is i love i love the songs they perform they, they're great okay uh, next up, I'm going to talk about Google. <laughs> you know, I I can't get that product out of my mind. So it's 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 funny, but it's very memorable. So I'll give you a brief history of this uh, product. Um. So uh, the product it's like a it's a flavored peanut butter spread. <coughs> Excuse me. It was marketed by Kraft Foods here in Chicago, introduced in 1971. And it's uh, it, it had four flavors. They had chocolate, cinnamon, vanilla, and banana. Hmm. And uh, I remember the commercials when they advertised it, uh, like on Saturday mornings, uh, you know, when I watched TV, you know, cartoons. Or like in the afternoons, I, I think afternoon TV as well. But I, I remember that, and uh, <laughs> and they had the they had a mascot, and he would dance to a jingle, and it's like peanut peanutty Google with the googly googly eyes, <laughs> which was modeled after the 1923 hit by Billy Rose, Barney Google with the googly googly eyes. <laughs> Great trivia. That's great trivia. <laughs> and uh, he would explain the product to the kids, or he would, or mothers would uh, endorse it too for their kids to buy it and all that. Um, you know, the funny thing is, it had a lot of uh, concentration of oil, so it doesn't stick to your mouth just like peanut butter. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, anyway, so excuse me. Anyway, so uh, like I said, I remember the commercials, and 
some people loved it some people didn't you know uh but if you like it sweet or with different flavors with peanut butter it sounds great especially chocolate you know i love that you know like um like those commercials with uh reese's peanut butter cups <laughs> you put my chocolate in my peanut butter you put my chocolate in my peanut you know you put my choc. you know you do you understand you put my peanut butter in my chocolate you put my chocolate in my peanut butter <laughs> That's hilarious. Excuse me, I had to drink some water. Anyway, um, the mascot, uh, let me describe what he looked like. He looked like an alien and he had four eyes and it was, it was, it was goofy looking. He had blue hair, his body shaped like a, a jar of peanut butter, <coughs> excuse me, with the letter K on it. Also, he, he talked like uh, he had a jai voice and he would dance and dance around. Huh. I feel sorry for the actor who's doing this. <laughs> and uh, he was he was goofy. And then, you know, in the jars, they have the goof, go, googly eyes, you know, they're kind of goofy, <laughs> like you see in cartoons. So uh, as for me trying this product, I asked my mom to buy it one day. Uh, this is when we were at Roseland. And they were in Chicago. Uh, and I said, Ma, can, can you buy this for me? And she didn't understand it. And she goes, why? This stuff is, doesn't look good. You know, I wasn't a peanut butter fan when I was a kid. You know, I was fussy. I didn't like peanut butter. I didn't like pizza. I don't like tomatoes. Still don't. But I love peanut butter now. And I love uh, pizza. So I came around and I did like peanut butter maybe when I got older. And then so my mom did buy this and she bought the chocolate one because I love chocolate. It was pretty good. And um, so uh, I tried the chocolate and uh, I remember she bought it for me and my brothers. We put it on white bread and ate it. And like I said before, it was good. Then um, one day it just disappeared. They didn't they didn't stock it anymore. It was gone. I don't know what happened to it. So I guess it wasn't very uh maybe the response of this product wasn't you know the demand of it wasn't that great. And it it didn't exactly fly off the shelves. So that's a shame. So in about the middle 1970s, I would say 1975, 76, maybe, it was, they, it was gone, left. It just went bye-bye. Okay. So, but you know what? This is sort of the predecessor, I can't say that, the, the product before Nutella, you know, because Nutella is European, I believe. And, you know, Nutella comes in chocolate and hazelnut, which is pretty good. I haven't bought Nutella in a while. I, I like Nutella. I really do. But, um, you know, I can't eat it all the time. You know, you get tired of it. But once you leave Nutella, you know, on the shelf, I don't know if you could put it in the refrigerator. It gets really gross. <laughs> so I didn't do that. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. It depends. Okay. Uh... You know, because uh, Kugel still spoken today, you know, and it's amazing that this product came out of Chicago, you know, from Kraft Foods. You know, they had their headquarters here. Uh, I remember the, the, the Kraft Foods, they had a company uh, in Chicago, in the city before, you know, in the 70s or even earlier than that. Then they moved to uh, Glenview, Northfield, up north, you know, some, and they were scattered around the neighborhood, uh, scattered around the area. Because uh, when I started in the travel business, I worked for an account for Kraft Foods, and that was up in uh, Glenview. And uh, I, I was a temp, you know, that's where I was a temp, uh, temporary worker. I was a packager for the American Express, and uh, yeah, so I worked there for about you know, six or seven months, and then I got hired as regular, uh, you know, as a regular employee, and we moved to Rolling Meadows. So, and then the craft, uh, it seems like the craft account moved to Omaha, I believe. So, I don't know, I don't know what was going on. It's crazy. 
Like that. But they had a store within the company. The headquarters was beautiful, and they had, they had a craft store, and they had all kinds of products. And I remember every day when I went to work, they had uh, a bowl of craft caramels. I'd grab one and eat it. <laughs> that was fun. That really is. Okay. Right now, I'm going to play a commercial of Kugel. And uh, sorry, everyone, I, I got cut off. Um, you know, I got distracted. So uh, I'll start in the beginning. Right now, I'm going to play a commercial for Kugel. And this product is from 19, probably 1972, probably, you know, probably in the beginning. And uh, I will play that. And it features a mob. With her son, and she's spreading the kugel on bread, and uh, she has a strange voice. So, and uh, so here is the commercial for Kugel peanut butter. And when I come back, I will I will wrap up the show. Again, I apologize for the cutoff. Okay, so here it is, everyone. Thank you. Here comes Google, the Kraft Peanut is a surprise. This is cool peanut spread from Kraft. It not only tastes like peanuts, it comes with flavors. And chocolate, vanilla, banana, and cinnamon. Kugel spreads creamy smooth, too. And it's delicious on bread or crackers or almost anything. And it doesn't make my mouth stick together. And it doesn't make my mouth stick together. You love Google, the Kraft Peanut is a surprise. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Kugel peanut butter spread. Again, I apologize for the cutoff. Yeah, something happened. Um, so, like I said, you know, we have Nutella. There's other spreads now, you know. We still have peanut butter. Uh, my favorite peanut butter brand is Skippy. It's creamy. That's what I like. Second is the crunchy kind. Um, I'm not a big fan of... What's the other one? Jif, because it has molasses, or Peter Pan. You know. They're okay. They're all right, yeah, but, but they taste funny. Smuckers, I've never tried it. But, you know, they have the natural peanut butter. You know, it's kind of oily, but it's good. Yeah, it's very tasty. Yeah. Uh, I've had it with honey. It's a little sweet, but it's good. You know, you, if you have organic peanut butter, I don't know what it tastes like. I hope it's natural. I don't have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. Anyway, so um, so I'm wrapping up the show. I'll do a recap of what I talked about. I talked about the Chicago rock band from the 1960s, the Crying Shames. Also, the uh, Kugel peanut butter spread uh, product from Kraft Foods from the 1970s. Uh, this podcast will be published uh, later on today, wherever po podcasts are found. For example, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, uh, Breaker, Overcast. Uh, if you if you uh, click on those apps, just in if you're new to this podcast, click uh, tap follow, and you'll get the latest notifications of uh, the latest episodes and also the. Uh, you can listen to previous podcast episodes if you like. Also, be shared on my uh, blog, BannerChicagoLand.blog. Also, on my YouTube channel, again, someone asked me yesterday, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? Where can I listen? Go to YouTube. Type in Van Chicagoland Stories. Uh, either my name, you will find Van Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. Click uh, subscribe. There's no charge. No charge whatsoever. You can listen to, and you'll get a notification. You can listen to previous podcast episodes if you like. Also, be shared on my uh, social media accounts, Facebook, X, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Blue Sky, Threads, and Reddit. I think I got them all. on TikTok. Okay. So, um, that would be, that's it for today. Um, the, I will publish, like I said, I'll publish this later on today. Um, I will not do a podcast tomorrow. Tomorrow is Palm Sunday, and I'll be going to church. So as a matter of fact, next week, next Tuesday, I won't do one either because I have somewhere to go. Uh, yeah, I have an appointment. 
And also, uh, next weekend, no. <laughs> so uh, you won't you won't hear me for me for about a week at least. So it's probably probably um, the next Tuesday, probably May. You know, you'll, I'll do another episode. So I'm going to take like a, a break from this, but I'll still post on Van Chicago Land on my Facebook page. So you know, that seems so. It's going to be busy. Okay, uh, like for example, tonight uh, is the unofficial Bogan High School reunion, which I go every year. I plan to go. I will be there, so that'll be fun. And of course, tomorrow I'll go to church. You know, for Palm Sunday, it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful this weekend. Oh, the weather's gonna be nice. You know, today's kind of cloudy, but tomorrow uh, I think it's gonna rain later on. Well, we'll see, but it's gonna be uh, gorgeous. And I also heard Holy Week is, is gonna be lovely. Lovely weather. I hope so. I hope so. It always rains uh, like that. I'm keeping my I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so this is Pico Science, your host of Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, here's a little traveling. Uh, here's bye bye for me, and here's a little traveling uh, music from Ray Rayner saying bye bye bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.